welcome everyone we will be talking about industrial relation with the comparative and international as a perspective so yes this is to be understood in the perspective of comparative and international perspective so oh, the agenda is very simple very straightforward we will talk about the key issues of industrial relationships the policies the practices of the multinational companies we will examine the potential constraints that the trade unions may have on the multinational or the impact that they uh, they might have outline the key concerns of the trade unions we will also extrapolate the recent trends and issues in the global workforce context discuss the formations of the regional economic zones such as european unions and the impact of opponent globalization introduction is cross cultural differences in industrial relations and collective bargaining we talking about the concept the level of negotiation the objectives ideology structures rules and regulation cross cultural differences also emerge as to enforceability of a collective agreements now there lies the effect now we remember cross cultural differences does have an impact we are talking about the concept the level of negotiation the objective and certain point of negotiation many a countries you are very loud you are very vociferous the trade union is very powerful and the other way around it might be the employer association the all the more powerful they have the last word at the end of a negotiation so depends upon the objective depends upon the level of uh, negotiations or ideologies or the structures that one faces around here factors underlining the historical differences in the structures of trade unions modes of technology the industrial organization at a critical stage of union development methods of union regulation by government ideological divisions within the trade union movement if any what are they and how do we go across with it we are looking at an influences of religion organizations on trade unions development managerial studies for the labor relations in a large corporation that is what we need to understand every now and then union structures you know the structures of a union differs from across different countries differs from boundaries to boundaries the industrial relation policies must be flexible enough to adapt in order to the local traditions towards the institutional requirement we are talking about industrial unions we are talking about every employee getting a representative from the industry from the levels of employment from their categories of background whatever you may per se however you want to segment the labor forces craft unions based on the skills occupational groupings across industry conglomerate unions is representing members in more than one country general unions are open to almost all employees in a particular country and enterprise unions is a single trade union within one plant or a multiple plant enterprise rather than within a craft or an industry common in mostly in asia pacific countries altogether as the enterprise union that comes around it so we are talking about industrial unions we are talking about craft unions craft unions are people from a similar background similar artisan similar technological we are talking about conglomerate uni unions where there are people coming from different countries different industries we are general unions open to almost every one of them in the country enterprise unions which might be a single trade union within a plant within a multiple units of plant enterprise rather than a craft so here this is what we are looking at for the union structures are concerned the challenge to multinational is all about standardization vis-a-vis -vis the local adaptations of unions so should we go for a standardization versions or the local adaptation global mindset and the local responsiveness is one of those parameters that needs to be taken into consideration differences in multinational enterprises approach to international rel industrial relation degree of centralization decentralization can be influenced by several factors now what are we looking into it degrees of intersubsidiary production integrations nationality of ownership of the subsidiary 
the IHR management approach, the multinational enterprise prior experiences in industrial relations. We are also looking at the subsidiary characteristic. What I want essentially want to note down for the audiences is that come what may, every industry is company specific, every industry is person specific. The IHR management approach, you name it and we have it all together. So management attitudes towards the union changes every now and then. What is the degree of inter-subsidiary productions? Let us see all about integrations and international labor re regulations. So high degree of integrations was found in most important factors in leading to centralizations of industrial relations functions within the firm studied whereas industrial relations throughout the system become a direct importance to the corporate headquarter when transnational sourcing patterns have been developed that is when a subsidiary in one country relies on the output of a foreign subsidiary as a source of component or as a user's office output in this context i let me allow me to state that the coordinated industrial relations policy is one of the a requirement of the day and a key factor for having a successful global production strategy now the nationality of the ownership of subsidiary you can have a national character you may forgo one in us the firm tends to exercise greater centralized control over labor unions then perhaps what you can do it in you know europe or for a or in for that matter in even in britain us firm tends to be placing greater emphasis is on formal management control and a very closely knit reporting system particularly in the area of financial control to ensure that the planning targets are met whereas foreign owned multinational in britain prefer single employer bargaining rather than involving a employer association and are more likely than the british firm to assert managerial prerogative on the matters of labor utilization U.S. owned subsidiaries are much more centralized in labor relations decision making than the British owned one. There are more integrated natures of U.S. firms, greater divergence between British and U.S. labor relations system that then between British and probably a European system. We are looking at ethnographic managerial style as far as U.S. firms are concerned. So international human resource management approach, what can we look about it? Are we looking at an ethnocentric predispositions? Probably yes, uh, maybe in one form or the other form, it is looking as an industrial relations to uh, conflict. Conversely, more geocentric firms will bear more influences in host country industrial relations system, owning to the greater propensity to participate in the local event. Let us understand what are the experience that is required in industrial relation. Now, we are talking about European firms, European firms which stands with an industrial relation at an industry level, where they are looking and talking with an employee association and probably vis-a-vis uh, -vis as frequently as possible rather than at a firm's level so individually they might not be looking at a company level but probably as an industry level people are talking and they are setting standards for the industry automatically the firms has to toe the line the opposite is completely more true for u.s firms in u.s the employee association have not played probably any role or any key role in the industrial relations system the firm based industrial relation policies are the norm is is as on a, uh, when on basis is the hands-off approach that comes around it if you're working for a outlet if you're working for a company the company will decide what to do and what to be done unlike in europe the company is a part of an industry and industry-wide negotiations will take place and the company is supposed to to the line Similarly, for subsidiary characteristics, subsidiaries formed through acquisition of a well-established indigenous firm tends to be much more autonomous over industrial relations than are the green field sites. Greater interventions would be expected when the subsidiary is of a key strategic importance to the firm and when the subsidiary is wrong. Where the parent firm is significant source of operating or investing funds for the subsidiary, a uh, subsidiary is much more dependent much more dependent on the headquarters for the resources now this 
might affect the performance of the subsidiary they will tend to increase corporate involvement in industrial relations and the hrm now whereas what happens to the poor subsidiary performances tends to be accompanied by greater increase of corporate involvement in industrial relations so what we are looking at centralization and decentralization if it is too much of a centralization performance might get impacted if it is all about decentralizations probably the subsidiaries has a play, has to play a major role and prob and the performances has to be judged accordingly so characteristics of a hpm a home product market is a lack of large home market is a strong incentive is only perhaps the reason why to adapt to a host country institutions and norms so you move from your beyond your boundaries of your country you go to a newer market if the domestic sales are largely relative to the overseas ex operation as in the case of many years from it is more likely that overseas operation will be regarded as an extension of a domestic firm so that is what is true with us if the consumption of the product in the local market is big enough and the overseas market contributes a minuscule part of the revenue probably you you treat him as an extension nothing much but for the european firm international operation are more likely a major part of the business because the bulk of the revenues come from overseas since the implementation of the single market union there has been a growth in a large european scale companies from formed via acquisition or joint venture that centralizes management organization and strategic decision making process thereby however process of operational decentralization with regard to industrial relations are also evident we'll talk about the attitude of management with respect towards the unions the knowledge of management attitudes or ideology concerning unions provides a complete elaborated explanations of the multinational industrial relation behavior then relying solely on the rational economic model competitive confrontational versus cooperative co-determination work council union density in the western industrialized society what happens sweden has the highest level of union membership yes everybody in fact is a part of a union one or the other us managers tends to hold union avoidance rule as if they are being looked down upon if you are a member of a union people don't actually appreciate your membership france has the lowest unionizations in the western world absolutely uh, they are working on their own so unionized trends and key factors let me elaborate those trends an overall decline among the industrial societies with few exceptions unionization unionizations rate remain high in public primarily in government organizations increased female unionizations reaching equal or even higher rates in some countries there is a shift in economies as far as from manufacturing to a service oriented economies we are talking about global competition and probably relocation of jobs to which places where the labor cost is lower lower down the rate your unit production cost goes down alternative employment is all we are looking into it we are talking about temporary employees we are talking about flexi employees we are talking about permanent employees we are talking about regular employees we are talking about ad hoc employees you name it and we are having it we are talking about internship internships also just an exposure to the work uh, environment so eeoa or european equal employment opportunities authorities regulate legislation and social movement thereby the key issues in international industrial relation national differences in economics political legal system produces anything and everything across countries multinational companies generally delegate the management of industrial relations to their foreign counterpart to their foreign subsidiaries to the new entity that has been operating in the foreign soil however policy of decentralization should not keep the headquarters from exercising some some sort form of coordination among industrial strategy generally corporate headquarters will become involved in an overseas labor agreement this is the true because of this agreement may affect the international plans of the firm and create a precedence thereby in the other countries influencing wage levels all the importance of labor cost relative to the other cost is decreasing over a period of time in fact the wage cost has been reduced due to a lot of automation works has been coming around it the uh, better bargaining powers in the hands of an employer the labor cost 
does still bother them and is an important part in determining cost competitiveness in most of the industries multinational that fails to manage their wages level successfully will suffer the labor cost disadvantages and thus might actually narrow the strategic options now what are we looking into it as far as employment levels at will or what are the abilities to vary for it in western europe japan australia the inability of the firms to vary employment levels at will may be of a serious problems than the wage levels many countries now have a legislation that limits considerably the ability of the firms to carry out plan closure redundancy or layoff programs unless it can be shown that the structural condition make this employment loss unavoidable plant closures or redundancies redundancies legislation in many of the companies frequently have been frowned upon specify that the company must compensate they don't appreciate the federal government doesn't appreciate and insists that the firm must compensate the redundant employees through specific formulas such as two weeks pay per year of services in many countries payment for involuntary terminations are substantial especially in comparison with those in usa hindering global integrations of operations many multinational companies make a conscious decision not to integrate and rationalize their operations to the most efficient degree because to do so could cause industrial and problematic problems one observers of the world auto industry suggested the car manufacturers were sub optimizing their manufacturing network partly to placate the trade unions and partly to provide redundancy in source to provide localized social strife from paralyzing their networks so general motors for example was sub optimizing or producing far below their capacity when i say sub optimizing in 1980s had undertaken a substantial investment in germany at the demand of the german metal workers union one of the largest industrial unions in the world western world in order to foster good industrial relations in germany the trade union responses to multinationals now with the passage of time there is a innumerable growth of multinational and this is viewed as a threat to the bargaining power of labor if the multinational is earning huge profit probably the bargaining power of the labor get diminishes because of the considerable power and influences of large multinational firms multinationals are not uniform anti union but their potential lobby power flexibility across national borders creates difficulties for employees and trade unions should develop countervailing power there are several ways in which multinational can have an impact upon the trade unions and the employees interest thereby there are seven characteristics allow me to display or tell it to them the first is the formidable financial resources that pocket becomes deep enough alternative sources of supplies because they are present in multiple location multiple countries definitely number of sources increases the ability to move production facilities to other countries again the mere fact that they are present in different location adds to their advantage a remote locus of authority comes around it a sense of superior superiority creeps in superior knowledge expertise in industrial relations the capacity to stage an investment strike as the case might be refuse to invest any additional funds in the plant that ensures that the plant will eventually become obsolete and probably non competitive the last assured is all of outsourcing or offshoring your work thereby this is what we need to understand the response of the trade unions of multinationals the response of the labor unions we are talking about form international trade secretariats we are looking for a lobbying of restricting of national legislation trying to achieve regulations as at par with international organization international trade secretariats or its there are approximately 15 international trade secretariats which functions as a loose confederation confederations to provide worldwide link for national unions and also for any particular industry particular company if you are looking at into it in terms of industry it might be metals transport chemical you name it we have it 
might be a pharmaceutical might be steel uh, might be coal might be mining the secretariats have them mainly operated to facilitate as a mode or exchange of information as in what are the best practices that has been perhaps is being displayed on a political level trade unions have many years to be lobbied for for the restrictive national legislation in both us and europe this motivation for trade unions to pursue a restrictive national legislation is based on the desire to prevent and export jobs via multinational investment policies definitely yes we come to the last slide for the day uh, it is all about regulation of MNCs by international organization attempt by trade unions to exert influences over multinational via international organization have met with some successes. The International Labor Organization has identified a number of workplace related principle that should be respected by one nation and all nation. We are talking about freedom of association. We are talking about the right to organize and collectively bargain abolition of forced and cohesive lever if I say so non discriminations in employment in terms of caste, in terms of skin color in terms of creed in terms of regions that the people belong to in terms of physical attributes so on and so forth there cannot be any form of discrimination and this the multinational companies has to be regulated and ensure that they follow the dictates eventually with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video